Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome to Babble with Bronies. I am your host. My name is Everlasting Joy, along with my good co-workers, Mr. Ben and Twilight is Magic. We want to thank you for stopping by today. Got a good chat today. I can... The more I dove into this, folks, the more I think we're going to be spending days, plural, on this. But anyway, we do have a lot to talk about, so I'm not going to waste much more time. I'm going to do things a bit unorthodox here today because someone had a request to get in and get out for various reasons. So, I'm going to do the news, I'm going to do this one person's art, and then I'm going to, um, and then we will move on otherwise. One thing I wanted to bring to mind, do you guys remember about a couple weeks ago or so, we we brought up that, um... That notion, or that article concerning chilies and how it had that pony posted. Well, Applebee's did something in a slightly similar vein. I won't go, I won't watch the video, but I do just want to bring this up. You piece of... I hate it when it does that. <sighs> anyway... This is just, uh, I'm just going to read the quick article here. I should think of editing that out. Anyway, um, blah, blah, blah. What's all you need to know about is pretty much in this video titled, You Call the Shots. It was, um, what Applebee's did was basically just that. On their Twitter page, they had a, um, well, just that. You call the shots where this uh, bartender here would do would be mixing drinks in this commercial. Yep. And someone, of course, had to say, um, yeah, very funny there, Dark 92 Enigma. Someone had to, of course, say, do, uh, do you like ponies as much as we do? And they have ponies in there. What's really interesting, go ahead and watch the video. I'm not going to, but go ahead and watch it on your own time is this tweet right here. Yep. Quote. <clears throat> Rainbow Ash. That video is pretty cool, as long as you guys don't backtrack like some other restaurant did. Quote from Applebee's. We never do that. Hashtag bronies for life. End quote. Anyone else feeling hungry right now? <laughs> Anyway, you guys got the article. Check it out. It's actually a fun video to just watch him mix those drinks. One thing concerning... Um, moving on here. Yep. I knew I forgot something. Boy, I'm really dropping the ball here. But then again... Tis me in a nutshell. Thank you, Matt, though, for that. Everyone's saying turn the ping down. Anyway, moving on from my blunders. Buck, the 2013 Buck DVD is up for pre-orders right now. This is just their um, Facebook page. Long story short, it's just that they have a link to the um, a link to the pre-orders. Uh, where is it that I wanted to say? Quote, If you enjoyed your time at Buck 2013, you can relive the experience all over again with the Buck 2013 DVD from E6 Productions. It's an officially sanctioned Buck documentary with some exclusive interview footage of guests and artists you won't see anywhere else. <laughs> some of the comments that you guys just brought up but i will bring up the link to the pre-order so for all of those of you who went there there is your link and um actually why don't i bring up the facebook page again so that way if you have a facebook page and want to follow buck there you go Very funny, Tim. <laughs> 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 
And finally, we just have our movies to get through today. Um, for December 6th and 7th, our A movies on Brony State are Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Pony 1 is Feeling Pinky Keen. The B movie is The Last Unicorn. And Pony 2 is Wonderbolt Academy. So, if you enjoy movies, stop on by. <coughs> if you enjoy movies, stop on by on December 6th and 7th. Our main movie night is Friday the 6th at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes, we have a European Encore on Saturday the 7th at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy movies and uh, watching them with friends, stop on by. I highly recommend it right here on Brony State. <laughs> All right, now then, let me bring him up. Doot, doot, doot. Oh, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Boom. I was watching a Bob Ross video and watching his force. <laughs> As I head out. Oh, okay. Talks um, are you there? Yes, I am here. Excellent. I why, am here. Why this bloody Skype logo does not work anymore, I don't know. But if it's not going to be... It, 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 it does that. It's been doing it on my end. It's, uh, you just have to uninstall the update, and then it fixes everything. Okay. There's a new update for it. All right. We'll have to do that. I'll do that later. But anyway, let's bring up your comic. Oh, Muffin yeah. Muffinfied. That was a fast comic. <laughs> How fast was it? Uh, under three nights. Because I was doing it during Thanksgiving night and Friday night. So I'm talking, I saw the leak on mm -hmm. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning. So whatever you want to say, Tuesday night, Wednesday, early morning, it leaked, obviously. And then I was like, okay, I got to do a comic now. <laughs> I got to overhaul the one that I'm doing right now to, to do this one. <laughs> Do you want to read it with me, or should I just uh, read it? You can read it. It's not a lot of dialogue. All right. <clears throat> the muffin relic of the two sisters. It does exist. <laughs> this is like a Legend of Zelda trap. This really is. <laughs> I, love, I love this last panel. Just that angry fist shake. <laughs> well, that was supposed to be a different angle. I tried to make it three quarters, and I'm, but again, the problem is I ASAP'd this comic together. Sure. I'm actually, I don't know if anybody, like, for me, I'm not really, I'm not entirely proud of these backgrounds. I mean, I they, they could have been a lot better if I had, like, the normal time, like, four or five days to really work on it. But I literally had Wednesday night, all Wednesday night, um, a very small portion. Of, I had only about four hours Thursday night, and then I had a about let's see the party in at midnight so i had another five hours to work on this wow so, it's, so yeah it wasn't a lot of time it came out pretty darn good for what it's worth it, oh it's for what it's worth oh yeah i mean i put basically six days or four or five uh about five days of work in the comic into what is equivalent to two nights worth of stuff dang that's that's impressive not it's only that, but that sounds taxing. It was actually. I'm. I was paying for it the last night, I should say, because I had to work on Black Friday, and then I had to do this comic after a big thing after Thanksgiving party. So it was kind of <laughs> interesting. But I mean, this the problem is right now. I have to. I'm making a decision right now if I want to do a uh, episode four comic, or if I want to go back to the comic I had to stop in order to make that one right there. Wait and see, kind of thing. Uh, no, I'm actually legitimately drawing the next comic for episode, a uh, pre-episode four comic. Huh. Wow. Oh, and the 
uh, him, I'm surprised people are finding the hidden muffins, but I'll just say it because a lot of people are asking. A lot of it, it's not the, the normal muffin is not the one that's in the comic. I hid, I always, if there's a muffin in the comic that's part of the story of it, it's not the main one. But in this one, the muffin actually was hiding in panel six as one of the stars. I kind of sometimes do put the muffin as a star, but this one I had to because there was no good hiding spots. I know you guys can't see the mouse, but yeah, it's up here in the glass. It's right by the lower part portion of it is practically pointing to it. <laughs> you yeah, say I, it I told glass. you I found it. <laughs> I always love it because people are like, oh, is it a real muffin? I'm like, yeah, it's a real muffin. I just happened to color overlay and there you go. Oh, well, I would kill her to make a daring do comic, but I've only drawn once of her, and it's actually canon, and it was even two it was two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> give him, give him time, Vest, given we're going to be revisiting her in uh, about a week. N- yeah, and you mean six days. Unless I, it gets, said ab- I said about. You do realize if you knew you, you, you do realize though if I if if if, it, if another episode ever leaks, I'm totally watching it. <laughs> As long as you don't spoil it for the rest of us. I know. Well, hey, that's... I, although I do try, and I do warn people, and then I play it in my stream, and people are really mad, and then people are like, oh my god, play it. Like, and the I, OMG, don't play that stuff. Well, I... It, so Vess is in the chat. I try getting him to play it. <laughs> and that, and actually, a lot of people actually left my stream because I was working on this comic, which is really comical. They're like, oh my god, I don't want to be spoiled, because I kept using screenshots so, because I had to make some references and stuff like that to make sure it looks good, colors-wise. To each their own. It's all right. It's kind of funny. In my opinion, it was, it was enjoyable. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going to go back to... i got to go drive to my uncle's house, and it's going to be a fun time. I'm going to go watch the Bills game, which has already started. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then thanks for, thanks again, Tox. Yes, no problem. And I know you get, you're gonna have a, you have a lot of art that you got to get to. So yeah, I'll, yep. I'll let you get back to it. All right, later, man. Yep, yep, later. Ladies and gentlemen, Muffin Fight by Toxic Mario and Toxic Mario himself. So, we have two games here this week by FTSE One. I want to get to them first, and then we will get to um, the art or videos. Um, the art. Or videos, depending on which one you guys want. So, first one, titled Vine Slicer. Yeah, forgive the, um, forgive the sc- poor screen, folks. But, I think for what it's worth, I will balloon this and um, just have you guys watch for a little bit. Pretty simple. Wait for the vines to come up. Click. Cut. Watch out for the ponies. It's best done with a mouse, let me tell you that. And if you lose, you get this. Why do you move over there? There is no reason for you to move over there, game. Uh, Footsie, do you have anything to anything to state on that? I will not clean up that damn desktop, Twilight's Magic. That thing is messy for a reason. The secret cheat code? Is it if it's the Tsunami or Tsunami Konami code, I'm going to laugh.
Yeah, I, I really don't know the... Um... It's the, yeah, it's organized chaos. That's a good way of putting it, Matt. But yeah, footsie, I really don't know the secret code. All right. Let's try that again. Where's the back to menu button? Darn it. Fair enough. All right. So it becomes even harder with the Konami code on it, eh? Noted. Well, let's move on to this next one. This one's a little bit more peaceful. <laughs> this one is titled Elemental Reactions. This one I don't think I really need to balloon for, so thankfully. I like this introduction. The story is, is it's, um, Twilight found a piece of the Tree of Harmony and is now examining it. The key to this is you try to break it up, start a chain reaction of sorts, and end all of the, um, reactions in as few mouse clicks as possible. It's a fun game and certainly very challenging. The key lays in timing. Up, 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 down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Lol. <laughs> do you get, uh, Footsie, do you have anything to say uh, concerning this? This one in particular? <laughs> all right, all right. If it's dirty. Ooh, it's even available on um on uh, mobile devices. Coolio. The cane on the left. What came? Oh. <laughs> well, 
there are always there's always a hidden Easter egg in your game, isn't there, Footsie? All right, let's move on. Ladies and gentlemen, Footsie O1's Vine Slicer and Elemental Reactions. Check them out. Seriously, I love the um, Elemental Reaction one. It's really fun. All right, folks, videos or art first? Sorry, Troy, I have no more games. So far, it's tied. Four art, three video. Five. All right, I'm going to call it here. It's currently 5-4 art, so we're going to art first. All right. Zen. Let me bring up... Let me make another little call here. Vest? Yo, what's up? Hey. <laughs> what? Um, uh, hold on one second. I'm slicing vines here still. <laughs> uh, uh, this game's too hard. Addicting, isn't it? Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, just running my show, you know. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Hello, bronies. So let's bring up your um, picture. Well, your colored image here titled my crystal what, yep what do you have to say about it well this image started out as a uh, collaboration between myself and two other people one of them is the writer for a uh, fanfic that he's working on right now and he's cool. trying to come up with a really nice solid uh, King Sombra origin story because it's something that the show hasn't really explored so it's like a nice open book kind of a thing. So I've been helping him with uh, writing some of the parts of it, and now he's actually having me help him write some, uh, draw some of the artwork for it as well. So he hired out a uh, artist who we all know and that we work with a lot. Her name is Bunimation. And uh, yeah, she gave me the lines for it, and it was passed along to me to do the colors for it. Amazing. Cool. What can you tell me about the image from your perspective? You know, like the coloring and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I was going for uh, lots and lots and lots of colors in this one because I saw that they had the crystals in it and stuff. So I was like, I get like blues and magentas in it and then think of like an orange light source to play with it and then the green focal point in the middle. So I was given a lot to play around with and I just embraced it fully. It looks like you do. I especially love this green coloring. It's very, very... It's a very deep, inviting green. I think you yep. handled that perfectly. And I don't use green very much, but using it as a focal point actually really worked so well in this one. And I've had people say, it's like, well, shouldn't it be red? And it's like, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not like we see Sombra use his magic at all during the season three premiere. So we, we didn't need, there's, there's so much about King Sombra that we don't even know. We don't even know the color of his own magic. I know, I checked. Exactly. Why so can it I, not be green? Yeah, so I just I just did what I thought would look most aesthetically pleasing for the image I was presented. Tell me a little more about that reflection in the back there. Is there anything you can tell me about that color-wise or um, effect-wise? Oh, that was actually uh, when, uh, when the guy who's writing the story came up with me and said that he wanted some artwork for it, and he was thinking about just having... Uh, Sombra growing a crystal out of the ground, kind of it being his turning point where he realizes what his true calling is, which is, you know, weaving crystals. Mm -hmm. 
I was just like saying, it's like, yeah, and I could imagine it just like refracted through a crystal in the foreground. You could see the visage of who he is in the future. Kind of like in the, in the pilot episode, when you, if you remember that one very quick spot uh, in the beginning of season one, episode one, when if you look through the hourglass and you see refracted through it, that image of Nightmare Moon. Yes. It's really subtle, but it's a really brilliant thing they threw in there. And I was just like, yeah, we should do something like that, like reflected in one of the crystals. And our line artist totally ran with it and knocked it out of the park. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think the image itself speaks for that. Can you tell me anything about some of the crystalline smoothing effects you had on there? Uh, well, it's just a, it's an effect that I use quite a lot for like metals and a lot of reflective chromatic surfaces. So, you know, setting the brush to linear dodge, hitting it a few times, hit it a few times with the smudge tool. Uh, but, uh, aside from that, it's, you know, just the, the, uh, the stuff on the side, you know, that stuff was pretty simple. The floor effect was a little bit more difficult because I actually had to finish up everything around the floor before I could actually get to it. So I could get the reflection right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I had to go back and redo a number of the crystals because, you know, it's like once I finish up something in the background, I realize well, I also have to you know, affect this in this other crystal, which are then affected in this crystal. It's kind of just like going around and around in circles, which is kind of the artistic process of whatever you do on your first pass isn't your final pass. Huh. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. But then again, it goes to show you how much of an artist I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, art artwork is pretty simple once you can wrap your head around it. It's fun. Sure, sure. I That I do buy easily. <laughs> Anything else concerning this piece? Well, uh, the line artist was a very special choice. I mean, it's somebody that we've known for a while, but now I can officially say that this is a collaboration between a colorist for Aspen and Xenoscope using a line artist who's also an animator on Archer. Really? So we can throw some... So this image actually has some, uh, you know, has some clout to it. Mm-hmm where being able to work with a line artist who's also an animator on what is quite literally my favorite show ever made, no exaggeration, <laughs> is it, it's actually kind of... Vest? 10, 20%. You cut off there a bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but um, what was it? There was a bit you that got cut off. You want to repeat yourself? Uh, sure. That it was just a it's just an honor working on this one because I get to work with somebody who works on my favorite show. Sure. So it's kind of the whole interconnected nature and something that, you know, we as a fandom have that a lot of fandoms don't have, which is just this great connection throughout the whole industry and crossing different industries. Quick question concerning that. How I wanna say unique, but how far-reaching, perhaps, does that go in this fandom in comparison to others? If you if you have any insight on that. Uh, especially, it's especially prevalent in video games. I remember that there was a art director at Naughty Dog who posted a very lengthy and a very uplifting compliment towards the, uh, the entire show and towards the fandom and the stuff the fandom was doing. And it transcends beyond video games. I mean, we have people in the music industry, like Lady Gaga to Andrew WK, who are like two polar opposites in the style of music they do. They're both fans of the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in comics, we got people who, uh, you know, they not only are fans of the show, but they're also very interconnected because the comics industry isn't as big as people think it is at least from what i hear people say they think it's made up of like you know tens of thousands of artists and stuff but you know between the big name comics between idw and xenoscope aspen marvel and dc and dark horse there's probably just a couple hundred artists who jump around between all of them so we all know each other sure so the people who work on the idw comics you know uh andy price and heather breckel their colors i mean, we all know each other how neat is that? Yeah, so it's like, it's less of developing a nexus, like, you know, a middle ground between the people who create the show and create the content up on their own little pedestal and we, the lowly peons on the lower tiers. We're pretty much equal now. That's saying something. Yeah. That is, 
That's an interesting insight. I like that. All right. Um, any closing remarks? Uh, no, that's just about it. Thank you for uh, thank for uh, showing this off. Hey, that the honor's all on this end of the <laughs> conversation. Believe me. Yeah. Well, glad you guys like it so much, and take care, all y'all. Take care, Vest. Ladies and gentlemen, Vess and his and his piece titled "My Crystal." That's the kind of stuff I love. People having or doing this job, you get this cool insight on stuff like this. All right, I should probably get exit this out. All right, he is still here. You guys want a comic? Of course you do, because you just like seeing me um, try to imitate these noises. This one is by a person I met not that long ago. This one's titled Full Sitting by Bob the Dalek. If you haven't seen his work, go check his stuff out after this. It's really fun. <clears throat> yeah, for, before I get into, the, um, get into this, I want to note, yes, in the comics, Vinyl Scratch, it's revealed that Vinyl Scratch has a brother, an older brother. We don't know his name, so if I recall right anyway, it's, I haven't read that one yet. Um, quote. Alas, at the time, it wasn't clear or it wasn't clear just what his name was, so I let the idea mull over for a short while at the back of my brain. Thus, this idea cropped up a couple nights ago. End quote. <clears throat> Long play. I've got to go to market. I need you to look after Vinyl for a couple of hours. Who's a cute little fool? Yes, you are. Wait, that interview with Jeff Nene is on in a, in a minute. Unleash your artistic talents for a while. I'm going to be busy. A couple of hours later. Yes, I love that narrator from SpongeBob, and I will never stop trying to imitate it. Him. Z z z z z z z z z. Final. I need to get you cleaned up. What a mess. And Ma is due back in ten minutes. It's possible Wither King Brony, like I said, I haven't read him yet. I have him, but I haven't read him. This should have been motivation to read them, but I refer you to what I posted on the Brony State front page um, a few days ago when I said my amazing laziness and absent-mindedness. Why won't the paint come out of your mane? Peekaboo! Now, don't squirm vinyl. Maybe it might be easier to cover it, just to cover it up instead. Perfect. My baby! Ladies and gentlemen, Full Sitting by Bob the Dalek. Who else is here? Okay. Uh, 
All right. Now, these next three, yes, three of them, are by our good friend Assassin Monkey. I'm going to show them rather simultaneously as best I can because they're, forgive me, Assassin Monkey, they're all roughly the same image, but, or at least the same concept of an image, kind of like a portrait series. So this first one is titled Celestial Harmony. The second one is titled Lunar Divide. Tree Fitty. Where's my Tree Fitty? And this last one is titled Discorded Discolored. This one's a bit different, and I'll spend a little bit more time on this one a little later, but... But, let's start, of course, with Celestial Harmony. I love this picture. And this is the one that uh, Toxic Mario was trying to get me to show last week. So, yes, this is one of those cases of, um, see, I will get to them, people. It just takes a while. <laughs> I love this picture. Why? It's the lighting in particular. But I also love these effects that he put with it. This rough, as he put it, quite a rough finish to this one. Didn't exactly go and clean up my brush strokes for a little change. <laughs> Probably because of distractions during my stream. Mainly myself. Playing around with the composition, hiding large parts of the subject behind something or outside of the canvas. End quote. This works. I just think this works so wonderfully. Ignore the fact that it was, you know, taking place during the night or, you know, a, a nighttime scene. Yeah, this coloration is just amazing. Assassin Monk, you did a fantastic job on this one. Uh, what do you have to say about this one, Assassin Monkey? Celestial Harmony. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Lunar Divide. This one is a bit different. I know it's roughly about what I just said with the last one, but the one thing that sticks out to me amongst this one is how you use one color, in this case blue, and did a fantastic job of using the various, um, sorry, I knew, I knew I should have waited, and I apologize there, Assassin Monkey. But anyway, I'll, I'll wait on this one when we get done here. Anyway, as I was saying, you did a magnificent job using the different blues, um, different hues of blue to make a wonderful piece using different, um, well, good, good use of lighting. That's what I wanted to say, good use of lighting. Do you have anything to say concerning Lunar Divide, Assassin Monkey? Yeah, the delay, there's always that delay, but um, if you have nothing to say, then we'll move on, okay? Yes, I intended that, people.
Well, of course, uh, for the record, I know you're going to get this late Assassin Monkey, but for what it's worth, I will always ask if the artist is here, if they have anything to say to it, because, you know, they might have something interesting to. If, if you do not, then um, we will move on. <laughs> now with extra fangs. All right, then last on the list, discorded, discolored. Yeah, you go go ahead and type in what you have to say about this one, Assassin Monkey. This one is a bit different than the other ones. I'm outside of the obvious, of course. I can't get enough of the mid petrification that you did. I think that was a really good call having the having this take place mid petrification. Cause it shows off your use of stones or you know, the petrifying process and the fact that he's still not petrified. <laughs> All right, we really should move on. Here's Celestial Harmony, folks. Here is Lunar Divide. And here is Discord Discolored. By the way, one thing I should note about this one, very good job on the rainbow. All right. We are so going to be so far, um, so go over so fast. Ooh. Here's one that I caught sometime in the week. This one's titled Wonderbolts Academy by Amy30535. Yeah, if you guys probably can't tell, I always love these anime-styled ponies, whether pony or human. So I saw this one, and I just thought, this has to so go on my show. Th this really does. She did a magnificent job with some bright colors, with the bright coloring, the outlining with using the bright background against a darker foreground figure was really, really well done. That was a good choice. That's a potential Matt the Shadow Man. Yeah, I'm just kind of letting the um, I'm letting the comments roll in here. <laughs> One, two, three. 
Magnificent job, Amy. All right. What do I want to get going with? Oh, here's one. This is someone who has not been on here in a long time. And I don't know if this is, um, I don't know if she will ever again, but we'll see. This one is titled Forest Caretakers by B Bakoya Star. A.K.A. Solar Slash, A.K.A. Soapy Solar. Quote, a commission for Obi-2 Kenobi to cheer up his friend. Feels a while since I've drawn ponies. <laughs> End quote. I think the cutest thing about this picture happens, has to be that little ducky. Because I can just... I can already just see the scenario going with this of the ducks like, you know, I can't find my mom. Help me. And Fluttershy, true to her nature, would help the ducky find his or her mom. And I think that's absolutely adorable. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Hmm, who do I want to go with next? I'm just making sure that there is someone in the, um, I'm just making sure that I am not missing anyone in the chat. So, yes. I... All right. You guys remember the great rogue? Well, I got another one of her pieces. This one I'm this one I like. I really like this one. This one's titled Sonic Spark Boom. Magnificent job using a f the focuses. You know, the being in and out of focus here. That was a really, really smart choice here. Quote, <coughs> Twilight performed the sonic spark boom without going too fast. Suck on that, Rainbow Crash. End quote. <laughs> Again, what I really like about this, it's the focus. That was a really smart move because it not only just gives us what to look at, but um, it creates a great focus Focal point, just in and of itself. That was smart. Teach their own Twilight is Magic. Really good use of a reflect on the hair, by the way. All right. Let's move on. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll do this one. It's a comic. Titled Castle Crashers Comic by Pixel Kitties. We get a drink first. Time to find out who this Pony of Shadows really is. It was not by my hoof that I was given flesh. Pinky, 
I was brought here by young male humans who wished for a late 80s video game reference in their little girl's cartoon. Are you conf <clears throat> Are you confusing household solvents with power-ups again? Because you're making absolutely no sense. Perhaps the same can be said of all religions. What? Indeed, Twilight. What is a pony but a miserable pile of friendship? But enough talk. Have at you. Yes, I'm intentionally um, groveling her voice a little bit to give it a eviler bit. <laughs> that Medusa head. Yeah, here's Twilight being OP, folks. Do you wish to continue the game, yes or no? <laughs> and to think I was even going to share this delicious pot roast I found in the wall! Ladies and gentlemen, comic cast or castle crasher comic by Pixel Kitties. Uh, which one do we want to go with? Okay, this one I was hoping to get this one in by um I was hoping to get this one in last week, but I got the message from this person this week. And I also was going to put in another, but I just figured I'd put in this one picture of hers that she put. And, um, because I thought this picture was more adorable than the other two. You'll see why in a second here, folks. This one is titled Christmas Photo by My Little Plush. I'm just going to kind of let this one speak for itself. I was originally going to try and show the Pinkie Pie because I thought those accessories were just absolutely adorable right there. And then I um, found Fluttershy and wanted to um, show her as well. But then I figured, like I said, I just saw this and I thought, why not show this instead? <laughs> Instant 10 out of 10. Actually, it's just a ring of bells, Twilight is Magic. If I recall right, these are for sale. I know she does commissions and sales, so check them out. Um, if I recall right. Anyway, check them out. Check her out, her DA page. And, well, if you like, if you like what you see, maybe you'll get something from her. All right, let's move on. We've only got about five minutes before we're over the first hour. Where did that time go, folks? I want to know where that time went. Ooh, here's one. This one is by a guy known as Mike Gray Wolf, titled My Little Pony Season 4, Twilight Princess Returns. Quote, 
It's a spoof of the cover art for the PSP game Final Fantasy Tactics, War of the Lions. End quote. The sign says, Caution, Princess Flight Training Grounds, stand clear. Look out for falling alicorns, end quote. <laughs> you did a magnificent job. I just like these forms, the pony designs here, folks. I really like what he did with them. Also, you did a good choice on your um, parody here, Mike. I like that. I haven't played the game, but I have played... Um, I played Final Fantasy Tactics Advance on the Game Boy Advance, so if it's anything like that, I'd have fun with it. All right. One. Two. <laughs> Rainbow Crash. I agree on that, Matt the Shadow Man. Easily. All right. Uh, let's see. No, no. I'll save that one for the end. All right, this next one is titled The Tree of Harmony Pin by Silver Slinger. I probably should have shown some of his work a long time ago, but now I'm finally making up for that by getting around to it. Uh, where was it? Quote, It stands a little over three inches, so about six and a half centimeters, and is around two and a half inches in width. It's entirely handcrafted out of sterling silver and steel sheet. The five harmony gemstones measure four by two millimeters each and are followed from left to right. Tourmaline, topaz, garnet, amethyst, and orange sapphire in three finishes. End quote. Everyone will, there's at least one person that exists in this world who will say everything deserves more screen time. But anyway... Yeah, do I really need to say much here, folks? I'm sh Most of you guys know who um, Silver Slinger, a.k.a. Chaotic Brony, is and are familiar with his work. What I loved about this one, though, was the fact that I think he went a little overboard with this one in a, in a good way. And I love that. All right, let's move on then. This next one is by our good friend Looted, titled To Destroy You. Much like that one we showed last week, folks, what was it? Um, that Discord one, that's it. What's really great about this one is how colorful this one is. I love this one because it's the blue and the black are I don't think I've seen her use this before, and I think it's a really good job. It's really intense, and it only adds to, well, Nightmare Moon, which is, you know, to use these intense colors with her is a fantastic choice. I love this.
Right on, Twilight is Magic. Right on. All right. This one, this one, I swear you guys are going to fall over from cuteness. This one is titled is titled Main Six Sleepover by Nigel Von Wolf. Yeah, I'm just going to again kind of let this one speak for itself. <laughs> Poor Fluttershy. Matt. <laughs> All right, let us move on. And finally, on the art, yeah, good job, Elliot, again. This one comes from our good friend Frosty Cat 13, titled Cadence Gets a Makeover, page four. And yes, it's a comic, so y'all get to hear me again. <clears throat> yeah, you hold that thought, Matt. <laughs> Cadence, I'm getting bored. When will you be done? Patience, Twilight. Beauty takes time. And so does tiring you out, kiddo. <laughs> Cadence, I don't really think... I really don't think... Flink. Oh, no. I, uh, ruined your mate. Now I'll have to do it all over again. Do it all over again. Enough! My mane looks just fine, Katie. Now it's your turn! <laughs> I have, I'll reach, I'll tell you guys what I said in the comments concerning this one. I said, Frosty Cat... You are without a doubt one of the most evil people I know for subjecting Cadence to this. Continue. <laughs> All right. Video time, folks. Hmm. Let's go with this one first. This one is titled Destiny by Argo Demon.
you might do to see what you've been through and all the ways you've made me proud of you. It's time now for a new change to come. You've grown up and your new you will see to find what you will be for it's time for you Destiny by Argo Demon. Demon, sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of let that one speak for itself. And to wrap things up here, we have an, another troller by our good friend Hero Strain. Titled The Equestria Games Catching Magic. Ladies and gentlemen, the Equestria Games Catching Magic, the official troller by Hero Strain. All right. Yeah, I am very sorry for the time, all the time we went over. <laughs> Math the Shadow Man. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with our discussion here, folks. The writing staff, or at least who I asked. One of the reasons I did this, I did it this way, was this does two things. 
First of all, this gives us a lot of stuff to talk about. Two, this gives us a reason to revisit this topic in the future with some of the other ones that we're going to get to in season four, the ones that we didn't get to today, and so on. So, yeah, let's open it up. The writing staff, what do you guys have to say about them? What do you have to say to... This is just to int- open it up. And this is on a very broad, general level. Yeah, I would say so there, Twilight is Magic. Yeah, eventually we will, Matt the Shadow Man. This is just opening lines. Well, again, patience, Matt. That's a good point, Iwa. That's That was something that I wanted to hit here, and I'm glad you brought that up. Right there, Rain Shadow. Right there. <laughs> Take care, Dark 92 Enigma. Well, as Matt opened up with, yes, we will be talking on a more writer by writer specific case but right now i'm just seeing what you guys have to say about anything specifically or on a general basis before we move on though i'm just going to get these last few comments read in and we'll move on mm-hmm. agreed before we go on i will say this let us not Okay, I'm going to stress that again. Not start with M.A. Larson. Why? I need another writer to make a point concerning him. So, except for M.A. Larson, which one of those listed beforehand did I, that I listed, do you guys want to start with? For those of you, I might as well read the list off for you guys. We have Charlotte Fullerton, Mitch Larson, I already said about him, Megan McCarthy, Dave Polsky, Amy Keating Rogers, Cindy Morrow, and Meriwether Williams. So you guys want, I got two McCarthy, one Polsky, three, four, one, one. We've got three, three McCarthy, two Amy, why don't we start with um, Megan since that's, since that's who won out, four, with Kandaryu there. So, Megan McCarthy, what do you guys have to say about her? Nobody did in seasons one and three, Iwa. Hence, he's on the list. I'll list you guys off um, what episodes they wrote. Because, yeah, what's funny is I'll 
share a quick um, personal story with you guys because, you know, that's why you're here. Something, this has to have been one of the most fun research episodes that I've ever done for this show. Because the more and more I got into it, the more and more it kept pulling me into it. It was like, because why? Because I started noticing so many patterns amongst the writing. As Twilight is Magic pointed out, I evaluate it on an episode-by-episode basis. So the writing staff does not, the writer barely concerns me. Because, you know, just because it has written by so-and-so, as I've preached time and time again before, does not make the episode instant gold or crap. And I hope you guys see that as well. But when you start looking, stop looking at the specific and start looking at the general picture, you start noticing patterns amongst them. And that gets fun. Really fun, for me anyway. So, um... Why don't I quickly read you her episode list? Her episode list includes Dragon Shy, Call of the Cutie, Green Isn't Your Color, and Party of One for Season 1. Season 2 is Lesson Zero, Sweet and Elite, Hearts and, Hearts and Hooves Day, and A Canterlot Wedding, Parts 1 and 2. For Season 3, she wrote Just the Crystal Empire. So... Uh, I'm just going to read some of these notes you guys were throwing out here. Yeah, Ken Colt, that is without a doubt probably the most impressive thing about this. Not only this writing staff, but this whole show is exactly what you said. They keep not only the characters pretty in a pretty good, consistent character, but um, it's not only consistent, but there's good growth across the entire season, which is something that we're you know we'll hit on eventually even more so as we get further and further along and i think it's because she's the current lead of the show that she's put on a lot of that iwa that doesn't mean to, and the reason i say that is look at her season one repertoire and then look at her season two and three list and you'll see what i mean by that good lord sudden wall of text Walls, I should say. Plural. But I don't mind that. And yeah, I know you guys want to say season four and all that as well, and that's true. Yeah, Matt's uh Matt's notes here. I'm reading them. I'm not go I'm I'm not trying to go on an episode by episode basis there, Matt the Shadow Man. So if you could try and um keep things a little bit shorter, I'd appreciate it. There's some there was a pattern I noticed amongst her that I wanna say. And this is why I didn't want to start with M.A. Larson. One of the things that I noticed amongst the um, the writing staff doing this, folks, is you can pretty much boil them down into two camps. They're either story-focused or character-development-focused. 
What this means is, is kind of just as it sounds, story episodes are more devised to just tell a good story, whether it be, you know, pretty much anything M.A. Larson wrote or some some by um, Amy Keating Rogers. These are just designed, as I said, just to tell a good story. There isn't much character, much grand or amazing character growth as in the other camp. The two work off of each, the two are opposites is what I'm trying to say. As I said, there are, or let me state for one thing though, there are exceptions, of course. But it's a general basis. And yeah, you could say that Twilight is Magic, not character development in so much as just, or character focused would be a better term. McCarthy, on the other hand, that I noticed looking at these episodes, and to be fair, this is a completely subjective point that I'm making. McCarthy was unique in my research based on that hers, especially her finales and openers, unlike placing her in either or camp, I can put her in both camps at the same time. And I think to me, anyway, that's where her greatest strength lays in is that she's both story-driven and character-focused. All of the other writers that I noticed, it, it was weird. I, I saw it, I could pretty much put them in either-or camp, as in discreetly. Yet, McCarthy, I couldn't. I had to put her in both. And I, I think it was Saturn who said... Um, McCarthy gets the characters or gets this show the best. And I think that is the key reason why she gets it the best is because she can tell both a great story and develop the characters greatly. Something, I have some other notes, but I'm just seeing if anyone else has anything to say about this. <laughs> what do you guys have? Uh, there was something else I noticed. Something that was interesting, and I think this partially has to do with, or this has to completely do with um, the fact that where she was in season one versus where she is now in seasons two and beyond. All of her season one episodes were self-contained, meaning that they don't have any... Um, I'm going to finish my point here before I get to you, Ken Colt. Her um, self one. Episode Season 1 episodes were all self-contained, meaning what happened in there just happened in there. There was no long-lasting, lingering continuity, no major overhaul of a change to the um, grand scheme of things. And then you look at her Season 2 episodes, and that just gets thrown right out the window, right there. We've already talked about Lesson Zero and what I, what I think about that episode, You'll see when we get there to um, the season two finale, the season three opener, and the season four opener when we get there. But again, it's just it was just an interesting note I saw. Does the phrase two sides of the same coin mean anything to you, Ken Colt? You're thinking that opposites have to be mutually exclusive. Not necessarily.
it's not a or back on my original point it's not a case of like you know it's self-contained and they never visit it again it's just a they it might be harkened back later like for instance i can only assume that dragon shy was harkened back to with um in season two episode 21 dragon quest but again it's the grand scheme of things the great ball game changer is what i'm referring to yeah, I think we're done with uh, McCarthy for now. All right, now you guys can choose who you wish. Who of those did I? Who of those did I say? Do you want to work with? Fair enough. I suppose it's just a matter of poor definition on my behalf, then, Ken Colt. And yeah, um, parallel, just different. Um, however, however you want to call it, however you want to call it, but it's not in the sense of a brawl or scruff, scuffle or, you know, fighting, etc. That's what I'm, that's the way I want to define it. I got, um, weak rating villains. I actually want to hit that before we move on. What do you guys have to say about Matt the Shadow Man's point here? Uh, that Megan is weak at writing villains. I'm not going to get into the love stories bit, though. We'll save that for when we get there. What I will want to get into, though, is that first point. Weak at writing villains. Now, uh, for what it's worth, folks, we're talking Chrysalis and Sombra. Right there, Twilight is Magic. We'll get to Sombra when we get there, because I do have a lot to say about him. A lot of it good, mind you. But I will hit on Chrysalis here um, while I'm thinking of it. While it's true she didn't have a lot of screen time, I'll give her a lot of credit where credit is due. Um, what was it I was going to say? She did a good job of fooling everyone, and I like her characterization here in the Season 2 finale than I do in the comics. We'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Rain Shadow, that has to be one of the... Um was one of the most bold lines I've um, read in a while. I like it. Just checking the lighting. Um, no, we can bring them in, J.E. Smith. Go ahead. Yeah, for the record, folks, everything or most things are open. Leave season four out. Um, I guess no, never mind. Everything's open except spoilers. During these discussion episodes, everything's open, so you know, feel free to jump around. And it's not like I don't. It's not like I would not allow that on um, episode discussions. I just don't like to do episode uh, to jump forward in episode discussions because I like to use. I don't like to spoil things. Things like we've already discussed Discord as a villain, and I could have given his stuff away in season uh, three, episode ten, 
but then what's your motivation to come back? So that's why I try to leave out things that we've already, things that will take place in future episodes. <laughs> Ken Colt. I, I kind of like that. <laughs> Checking Tim's point there. And of course, you have to consider backstories from a storytelling standpoint, folks. Do we want to take time to explain a character's backstory? As in just that, taking the time, and I should say money too, taking the time and money to explain their backstory when it's going to have no bearing on the story, or even if it does have some bearing on the story, it's probably going to be really moot. Sombra, not even once. Right there, Thunderbolt. We'll touch upon backstories when we get to Season 2, Episode 21, folks. There's a point I need to bring up there. I wish I didn't have to, but there is a point I want to bring up there that you guys probably already know it, but I want to save it for that point. Not that we know of Wither King uh, Brony. I'm not going to touch on that for spoiler reasons. And of course, it's just pure speculation on my behalf. But I just don't want to divert and go down that road. Which is exactly what they did, J.E. Smith. We'll definitely get there when we get to the comics, Rain Shadow, because I, I can't wait to get to that one.
Amen, Weather King Brony. Amen. <laughs> No plan survives, um, what, what's the phrase? No battle plan survives um, immediate contact with the enemy, Ken Colt. Understandable, Rain Shadow. That, that's understandable. Right there, Thunder Thunderbolt. Right there for a lot of the villains here. What's surprising, Matt the Shadow Man, is of those that I listed, not many of them do. Uh, obviously, yeah, McCarthy, I'll just state this for, you guys can keep talking, go ahead, but yeah, M Megan McCarthy did with Foster's, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, but surprisingly, not many of them have worked with Lauren, er, at least on shows like the Powerpuff Girls and Foster's, so I don't know... I can't say on behalf of the other writers who has, who, and if they have worked with her. Now, I could be wrong, of course, so work with me here, but this is just what I saw, nothing more. You know what, Mr. Ben? Right there. Right there. I think we're starting to um, really go off track here, folks. Now, at this point, I think we've hit all that we can. Yeah, that's that would not surprise me too, Rain Shadow. That, that is a good point. So anyway, why don't we get back to... Um, why do we not get back to the topic at hand? Because I know you guys are kind of starting to dart off to the wedding episode. So, which writer do you want to talk about next? So that's two for Amy, three, four, no, I'm not going there, Mr. Ben, five. Okay, I think it's pretty darn unanimous. Amy Keeney Rogers, folks. What do you guys have to say about her? Before, uh, keep going, but I will, I'll just read the le episodes off here. Her episode list includes The Ticketmaster, Apple Buck Season, Bridal Gossip, Fall Weather Friends, A Dog and Pony Show, and The Best Night Ever for Season 1. Yeah, she wrote a lot of it. For Season 2, 
They include The Cutie Pox, The Last Roundup, A Friend Indeed, and Mystery on the Friendship Express. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just state that right there. Twilight is magic. Yeah, what he's saying, I would have to agree with. What's interesting, though, is I'll get back to... I'll get back to the second bit in the in a little bit. But yeah, what he said, very good character, character-focused character episodes. Yeah, look at this episode list here, folks. Apple Buck Season, Fall Weather Friends, Dog and Pony Show. Or no, not that one, I'm sorry. Uh... The last round, uh, that's iffy, but anyway, the ones that I mentioned, these are very character driven. I could even go with the last round up. I'll go with that one. Yeah. Examples, Twilight is Magic. You're, it's like you stole my notes, Twilight is Magic. If anything, it's just a point. Something I do want to... Something I want to note, folks. Again, looking at these episodes and noticing that um, those... The two camps. Something with AKR I noticed rather interesting. Much like Megan McCarthy, I can put her in both camps. The difference is where McCarthy can be placed in both camps at the same time, Amy, I have to place on um, in both camps at separate times. Looking over these episodes, I noticed that one's very story-driven. That one's very character-driven. Story-driven, 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 character-driven, etc. Case in point, all the story cases, some of the story cases like The Ticketmaster, The Best Night Ever... Uh, mystery on the Friendship Ex- Express. Not a lot of these have, you know, again, grand opening character developments or character moments. They're just good, harmless, fun stories to watch. On the flip side of things, character cases would be like Apple Buck Season, where we have great moments of AJ in particular, among other characters, and um, a friend indeed. Do I need to say much about that one concerning Pinkie Pie? So again, it was just interesting that I can put her in both camps, but I can't put it at the same time. And just seeing if anyone's going to have anything else to say. I would go ahead and say that. Something I... One last note I want to throw at Amy here. Uh, Hang on, I'm going to read Matt's bits.
Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you on that one, Rain Shadow. Actually, that fell out of her power, Kandaryu. That was um, higher-ups who censored Derpy, but we'll get there when we get there. One thing I want to note, everyone here is saying she's good at writing SOLs and harmless fun. What's interesting is in season one, she's actually shown that she can do long, overarching stories. Look, again, Ticketmaster and the season one finale. Do I really need to say more about those? Well, I well, I know you guys are probably going to argue that that's still in her field of expertise, her you know, her best. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that those could fall under grand types, you know, Megan McCarthy type epic types. Hold that thought, Twilight is Magic. Just hold that thought. <laughs> Grand type auto. Yep, that's my that was my point, Rain Shadow. Anything anyone has to say about um Amy Keating Rogers at this point? Like I said, Twy, if we don't get to her now, we'll get to her we'll get to her and um the other writers in a in a later episode. Which, as I said, when I was working on these notes, I was thinking, you know. I bet we're going to be here for more than one episode. And if that's the case, it's fine by me. Right there, Matt the Shadow Man. I mean, look at what my favorite season one episode is. All right. I think we are going to have time for one more writer. Um, And you know what? I think I want to choose this writer. Why? Because if we I if we vote Meriwether Williams, folks, we're well let me look over the list here. The reason I'm just let me look really quickly. I'm just trying to think of time-wise, folks. Not only for this episode, but for the next episode. Because if we get to... Um, because if we take out... If we were to take out Williams, Polsky, or Larson, 
then we're not going to have as much for next episode. So that's why I'm, I think I'm just going to pick one this time. Someone that's going to take this remaining five minutes that we have, and then we can wrap up later. So I want to talk about Cindy Morrow. And what's one of the nice things I like doing about this folks is I don't think we've, um, I have not heard anyone say anything, literally anything about Cindy Morrow or Charlotte Fullerton. So one of the fun things about doing this is I'm going to finally hear people say stuff about them, which I think is going to be fantastic. So Cindy Morrow, she wrote Griffin, the brush off winter wrap up the show stoppers owls. Well, that ends well sister who social family appreciation day, read it and weep hurricane fluttershy one bad apple and apple family reunion. So what do you guys have to say? Yeah, that was something I noted too, Iwa, right off, right there. I'll get to some specific examples here shortly, but yeah, your point, very welcoming in a girly animation. Agreed. Yeah, definitely, Ken Colt, definitely. That rain shadow right there, agreed. Right there, Matt the Shadow Man. Yeah, I do have to agree with you, Matt. She's hit or miss. Because she wrote, yeah, Sister Who's Social, Winter Wrap-Up, Griffin the Brush Off, uh, Read It and Weep, Hurricane Fluttershy. But she also wrote um, The Showstoppers, Owls Well It Ends Well, and though I do have a soft spot for it, Apple Family Reunion. We'll get there when we get there. Owl's Well That Ends Well, Season 1, Episode 24. I just said uh, said them, Rain Channel, but I'll say it again. Um, the misses would be Owl's Well That Ends Well, The Showstoppers, Apple Family Reunion. There you go. Obviously, those are sub those are my opinions. You're entitled to yours, but I'm just throwing them out there. I said somewhat, and I did say I have a soft spot for it, Mr. Ben. If I had to put her in a camp, it's not a contest. She's definitely a character-focused one. As I think it was Iwa who pointed out earlier about there's always a constant conflict. But... Um, yeah, and that was another pattern that I noticed amongst her. Amongst all her work, there's almost always two characters in a, I should say, a character or more in some sort of heavy conflict. Much like another writer that we haven't discussed, Charlotte Fullerton. 
Moro's episode seemed to have her characters break, but not in a um, lose their mind kind of way. Moro's characters are broken by either extreme sorrow, anger, or some other type of extreme emotion. Look at Griffin the brush off. Fluttershy gets, well, <laughs> yeah, yelled at by Gilda. We've got uh, Sister of Social. You know, I say more about that. Um, winter wrap up. We have Twilight um, getting yelled at by AJ, running off, crying. We've got Owls Well and Ends Well with Spike um, getting extremely jealous, and so on and so forth. You guys want to discuss the songs? That's probably one of those one days, one day late, or someday in the far future. But yes, back to my original point, that was a pattern that I noticed amongst Morrow's work. Can we get off of Spike at your service and get back to um, to uh, Cindy Morrow, folks? Kind of, Ewa. Yeah, I, I would go, go so far as to say that. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Autopilot. Interesting way of putting it, Matt, but that's another story. Again, we'll get there when we get there, Matt. Don't worry.
<laughs> that explains it, Twilight is Magic, why we aren't seeing Gilda anymore. Definitely, Matt the Shatterman, definitely. I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I did say 10, but that doesn't mean... Um, that does not mean... Let me back up here. Remember how I said these are only general observations? We're looking at a grand, wide, general look at things here, folks. So, yeah, you what Matt just did, you can come up with specific examples that say otherwise. But, yeah, definitely, definitely have to agree with you on that one. Sorry about that, folks. All right. So I think we are, I think we might want to consider wrapping this up, folks. I think it was both, Rain Shadow. I think it was both. But again, we'll kind of get there when we get there. It certainly brings up a note that I should uh, talk about when we get there. But much like the show itself, some of the fun of doing this show, BWB, I get that kind of stuff from you guys. Notes that I need to bring up during the episode that I never would have thought of on my own. So, so again, I love doing this job. I'll answer that later, Wither King Brony. All right. It is, we are five minutes over, folks, so we, we really should wrap this up. And I think we've said all we can say. We've said all we can say about not only Morrow, but we've got all that we wanted. So... Let's wrap this up. But, man, it looks like it looks... Well, I guess you guys are just going to have to watch the recording, unfortunately. Anyway, um, let's wrap this up. Yeah, as you can guess, next week we're planning on doing this. I will say this. There might be a change of plans. I haven't... We haven't... There. I'm only saying this because... For your guys' sake... There is something in the works. I don't expect it to pass. If it does, we'll substitute it, and you'll guys, you guys will know. If you don't, next week we're finishing up our um, statement on the writers. So, next, uh, so for myself, Everlasting Joy, I want to thank you all for coming. And on behalf of my good friends, Mr. Ben and Twilight is Magic, I want to thank you for coming. Hope you join us next week. Send things in. Don't forget to check out the website. I want to do that now. bwb.bronystate.com You can find us. I'm going to send you the contact pages, folks. Find us on all these websites. There's another one I need to link to. I'll get that fixed. But find us there. Like us. Follow us. Subscribe to us. Then, um... You can keep keep up to date on everything. Also, if you noticed on the home page, this that updates on the side here, we send out all of our episode updates are right there. Wednesdays, you'll find it. So if you want it a day earlier, then when we release it on DeviantArt and the like, go here. You will get your updates. Among other things. So for that. That's all I have to say.
And with that, farewell.